This monument was erected in the central square of Trostanet city back in 1983 in honor of the victory of the Soviet army over Nazi Germany. All would be well, but on February 24th it was again fired upon by the Russian invaders. This tank works and belongs to the armed forces of Ukraine. In addition to the monument, the central square of the city itself was also damaged. This is how it looked before the arrival of the Russian army, and this is how it looks now. The Russian invaders destroyed not only the square, but also shops, supermarkets, a bus station, and set up their headquarters at the railway station. Captives were held and tortured here. There was more than one person. The Russian military entered the Trostanets railway station on February 25th. Somewhere around 4 p.m. they came here in tanks. We had passengers at the station, we hid people in the bunkers and went down there ourselves. On the morning of the 26th, we workers left the bunker. We saw that there were already snipers on the roof. We were at their gunpoint. On that day, a woman who was riding a bicycle was killed. They were all here in the building in every room, and the rooms they both cooked and relieved themselves. This is our lounge. When passengers came, they rested here, for example, business travelers. This was our reception desk. Everything was lined up with cabinets so that the window could not be seen, no light, anything. They broke through the wall here. On the wall, in the next room, the Russian invaders drew a plan to capture the nearest villages and towns. This was our luxury lounge, and this is a map. Here are Trostyanets, Stanova, Ludra, Okhtyrka. Every day, employees of the station lived at the gunpoint of Russian occupiers. Natalia managed to leave only a month later, on March 15th. You can't put this into words. You are driving, passing a checkpoint. It takes half your life away had they checked everything from A to Z both had the car and the phones. We hid them where we could and how we could. We were shaking because grenades were thrown under the cars. Now, after a month of occupation, ticket offices and suburban train routes are working again at the railway station. The city of Trostanets in the Sumu region was under Russian occupation for about a month, from February 24th to March 26th. Almost 45% of the city's buildings are destroyed. This is Olha. Two months ago, the woman had a house, now only a memory of it. To go in for the first time was not just scary, it was creepy. So far, it's like a nightmare. I can't believe that we will never enter our apartment and will never live here. Here is the result of the Russian world. Olha lived in this apartment for about 10 years together with her husband and daughter. During the Russian occupation, she moved to a neighboring village, also occupied by the Russian army, to live with her parents. Daughter was a weightlifter. That's it. All down the drain. In this room, the family experienced their happiest days. They sang karaoke, listened to music and watched movies in the evenings. We had a life here, karaoke and all of that. It's a pity. We had a Scottish fault cat. She suffocated here. And this is the room of her daughter Katya. This was my daughter's room. The gold melted somewhere here together with the jewelry box. We will never find anything. We are starting to get used to the idea that we are left with nothing. Three shells fell into the yard at once. Here one shell hit the garage of a neighbor who lived on the first floor. The garage burned down along with a the car, then two more shells. And in recent days, our house has been shelled specifically. They just said, it bothers us. A 96-year-old grandmother who lived on the fifth floor died in this house. She was burned alive in a roof fire. Yuri is another resident of this house. He stayed in Trostyanets throughout the Russian occupation. We asked them why they came here, what were they looking for, why did they do all this. They said they were looking for Bandera here, the Nazis. While the residents of the house were hiding in the basement of a high-rise building, the Russian military lived in their apartments. Those with an open anti-Russian stance were killed. One person began to speak openly. You understand that you are invaders. In short, they hit him 
on the head with the rifle butt. They robbed, destroyed our entire infrastructure, destroyed everything with our Ukrainian symbols on it. And it was clear that this was a special destruction, so that we would have nothing left, like there was no country at all. Reported by Marina Stepanenko, Anastasia Zhuk, UATV News.